The Dwight D. Eisenhower National System of Interstate and Defense Highways is a network of freeways that forms a part of the National Highway System of the United States. The system is named for President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who championed its formation. Construction was authorized by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, and the original portion was completed 35 years later. The network has since been extended, and as of 2012, it had a total length of 47,714 miles, making it the world's second longest after China's. As of 2011, about one quarter of all vehicle miles driven in the country use the interstate system. The cost of construction has been estimated at $425 a billion. History, Planning the United States government's efforts at constructing a national network of highways began on an ad hoc basis with the passage of the Federal Aid Road Act of 1916, which provided for $75 million over a five-year period for matching funds to the states for the construction and improvement of highways. The nation's revenue needs associated with World War I prevented any significant implementation of this policy, which expired in 1921. As the landmark 1916 law expired, new legislation was passed a year the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1921. This new road construction initiative once again provided for federal matching funds for road construction and improvement, $75 million allocated annually. Moreover, this new legislation for the first time sought to target these funds to the construction of a national road grid of interconnected primary highways setting up cooperation among the various state highway planning boards. The Bureau of Public Roads asked the Army to provide a list of roads it considered necessary for national defense. In 1922 General John J. Pershing, former head of the American Expeditionary Force in Europe during the war, complied by submitting a detailed network of 200,000 miles of interconnected primary highways a year the so-called Pershing map. A boom in road construction followed throughout the decade of the 1920s, with such projects as the New York Parkway system constructed as part of a new national highway system. As automobile traffic increased, planners saw a need for such an interconnected national system to supplement the existing, largely non-freeway. United States numbered highways system. By the late 1930s, planning had expanded to a system of new superhighways. In 1938 President Franklin D. Roosevelt gave Thomas MacDonald, chief for the Bureau of Public Roads, a hand-drawn map of the United States marked with eight superhighway corridors for study. In 1939, Bureau of Public Roads Division of Information Chief Herbert S. Fairbank wrote a report called Toll Roads and Free Roads, the first formal description of what became the interstate highway system, and in 1944 the similarly themed interregional highways. The interstate highway system gained a champion in President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was influenced by his experiences as a young army officer crossing the country in the 1919 Army convoy on the Lincoln Highway, the first road across America. Eisenhower gained an appreciation of the Reich's Autobahn system, the first national implementation of modern Germany's Autobahn network, as a necessary component of a national defense system while he was serving as supreme commander of the Allied forces in Europe during World War II. He recognized that the proposed system would also provide key ground transport routes for military supplies and troop deployments in case of an emergency or foreign invasion. The publication in 1955 of the General Location of National System of Interstate Highways, informally known as the Yellow Book, mapped out what became the interstate system. Assisting in the planning was Charles Erwin Wilson, who was still head of General Motors when President Eisenhower selected him as Secretary of Defense in January 1953. Construction the interstate highway system was authorized by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956 a euro popularly known as the National Interstate and Defense Highways Act of 1956 a euro on June 29th. Three states have claimed the title of first interstate highway. Missouri claims that the first three contracts under the new program were signed in Missouri on August 2, 1956. The first contract signed was for upgrading a section of USA 66 to what is now designated Interstate 44. On August 13, 1956, Missouri awarded the first contract based on new Interstate Highway funding, 
This work began on US 40 in St. Charles County. Kansas claims that it was the first to start paving after the act was signed. Preliminary construction had taken place before the act was signed, and paving started September 26, 1956. The state marked its portion of EO Euro 70 as the first problem in the United States completed under the provisions of the new Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. According to Information Liaison Specialist Richard Ingroff, the Pennsylvania Turnpike could also be considered one of the first interstate highways. On October 1, 1940, 162 miles of the highway now designated EO Euro 70 and EO Euro 76 opened between Irwin and Carlisle. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania refers to the Turnpike as the granddaddy of the pikes. Milestones in the construction of the interstate highway system include, October 17, 1974, Nebraska becomes the first state to complete all of its mainline interstate highways with the dedication of its final piece of I. October 12, 1979, the final section of the Canada to Mexico Freeway Interstate 5 is dedicated near Stockton, California. Representatives of the two neighboring nations attended the dedication to commemorate the first contiguous freeway connecting the North American countries. August 22, 1986, the final section of the Coast to Coast I-80 is dedicated on the western edge of Salt Lake City, Utah, making I-80 the world's first contiguous freeway to span from the Atlantic to Pacific Ocean and, at the time, the longest contiguous freeway in the world. The section spanned from Redwood Road to just west of the Salt Lake City International Airport. At the dedication it was noted that coincidentally this was only 50 miles from Promontory Summit, where a similar feat was accomplished 120 years prior, the laying of the golden spike of the United States' first transcontinental railroad. August 10, 1990, the final section of Coast to Coast I-10 is dedicated, the Papago Freeway Tunnel under downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Completion of this section was delayed due to a freeway revolt that forced the cancellation of an originally planned elevated routing. September 12, 1991, I-90 becomes the final coast-to-coast -coast interstate highway to be completed with the dedication of an elevated viaduct bypassing Wallace, Idaho. This section was delayed after residents forced the cancellation of the originally planned at-grade alignment that would have demolished much of downtown Wallace. The residents accomplished this feat by arranging for most of the downtown area to be declared a historic district and listed on the National Register of Historic Places. This succeeded in blocking the path of the original alignment. After the dedication residents held a mock funeral celebrating the removal of the last stoplight on a transcontinental interstate highway. October 14, 1992 the original interstate highway system is proclaimed to be complete with the opening of I-70 through Gunwood Canyon in Colorado. This section is considered an engineering marvel with a 12-mile span featuring 40 bridges and numerous tunnels and is one of the most expensive rural highways per mile built in the United States. Although this was claimed the final section of interstate highway to open, at the time this section was dedicated there were still missing interchanges elsewhere in the system, making some interstate highways not contiguous. The initial cost estimate for the system was $25 a billion over 12 years. It ended up costing $114 a billion and took 35 years. 1992 a euro present, missing interchanges, although the system was proclaimed complete in 1992, two of the original interstates, I-95 and I-70, are not contiguous because they are missing interchanges. Both of these discontinuities are due to local opposition, which has blocked efforts to build the necessary connections to fully complete the system. I-95 is discontinuous in New Jersey because of the cancellation of the Somerset Freeway. This situation is being remedied. The Pennsylvania Turnpike Interstate U95 Interchange Project currently under construction will connect the separate sections of EA Euro 95 to form a continuous route, completing the final section of the original plan. Construction began in 2010. There is a missing interchange between the Pennsylvania Turnpike and I-70 near Breezewood, Pennsylvania, where traffic must use a few blocks of US-30, which are cluttered with services, to rejoin I-70. 
although solutions have been proposed through the years to complete the discontinuity on I-70, they have been blocked by local opposition. Expansion Additional spurs, loops, and bypasses remain under construction, such as I-485 in North Carolina, which has been under construction since the 1980s. A few main routes not part of the original plan remain under construction, such as I-22 in Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama, and the extension of I-69 from Indiana to Texas. Officials have also identified some non-interstate corridors for future inclusion into the system either by construction of new interstate routes or upgrade of existing highways and roads to meet interstate standards, such as with I-41. I-49, formerly within Louisiana, was designated as an expansion corridor, and FHWA approved the expanded route north from Lafayette, Louisiana, to Kansas City, Missouri. The new I-49 northern expansion into Arkansas and Missouri is under construction with various new freeway sections already designated with the I-49 number. In late 2012, the northernmost section was officially designated I-49 from the I-470 junction south of Kansas City, Missouri, to the I-44 junction at Joplin, Missouri. Standards the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials has defined a set of standards that all new interstates must meet unless a waiver from the Federal Highway Administration is obtained. One almost absolute standard is the controlled access nature of the roads. With few exceptions, traffic lights are limited to toll booths and ramp meters. Speed limits. Being freeways, interstate highways usually have the highest speed limits in a given area. Speed limits are determined by individual states. From 1974 to 1987, the maximum speed limit on any highway in the United States was 55 miles per hour, in accordance with federal law. Currently, rural speed limits generally range from 65 to 75 miles per hour. Several portions of I-15, I-84 and I-86 in Idaho, EA Euro 10 and I-20 in rural western Texas, portions of EA Euro 15 in rural central Utah, sections of I-84 in northern Utah, and most of I-25 and I-80 in Wyoming have a speed limit of 80 mph, the highest speed limit on an interstate highway in the nation. Typically, lower limits are established in northeastern states, while higher speed limits are established in southern and western states. For example, the maximum speed limit is 75 mph in northern Maine, varies between 50 and 70 mph from southern Maine to New Jersey, and 50 mph in the District of Columbia. In some areas, speed limits on interstates can be significantly lower in areas where they traverse significantly hazardous areas. The maximum speed limit on I-90 is 50 mph in downtown Cleveland because of two sharp curves with a suggested limit of 35 mph in a heavily congested area. EA Euro 70 through Wheeling West Virginia, has a maximum speed limit of 45 mph through the Wheeling Tunnel and most of downtown Wheeling. And EA Euro 68 has a maximum speed limit of 40 mph through Cumberland, Maryland, because of multiple hazards including sharp curves and narrow lanes through the city. In some locations, low speed limits are the result of lawsuits and resident demands. After holding up the completion of EA Euro 35 in St. Paul, Minnesota, for nearly 30 years in the courts, residents along the stretch of the freeway from the southern city limit to downtown successfully lobbied for a 45 mph speed limit in addition to a prohibition on any vehicle weighing more than 9,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. EA Euro 93 in Franconia Notch State Park in northern New Hampshire has a speed limit of 45 mph because it is a parkway that consists of only one lane per side of the highway. Other uses as one of the components of the national highway system, interstate highways improve the mobility of military troops to and from airports, seaports, rail terminals, and other military bases. Interstate highways also connect to other roads that are a part of the strategic highway network, a system of roads identified as critical to the U.S. Department of Defense. The system has also been used to facilitate evacuations in the face of hurricanes and other natural disasters. 
An option for maximizing traffic throughput on a highway is to reverse the flow of traffic on one side of a divider so that all lanes become outbound lanes. This procedure, known as contraflow lane reversal, has been employed several times for hurricane evacuations. After public outcry regarding the inefficiency of evacuating from southern Louisiana prior to Hurricane George's landfall in September 1998, government officials looked towards contraflow to improve evacuation times. In Savannah, Georgia, and Charleston, South Carolina, in 1999, lanes of I-16 and I-26 were used in a contraflow configuration in anticipation of Hurricane Floyd with mixed results. In 2004 contraflow was employed ahead of Hurricane Charlie in the Tampa, Florida area and on the Gulf Coast before the landfall of Hurricane Ivan. However, evacuation times there were no better than previous evacuation operations. Engineers began to apply lessons learned from the analysis of prior contraflow operations, including limiting exits, removing troopers, and improving the dissemination of public information. As a result, the 2005 evacuation of New Orleans, Louisiana, prior to Hurricane Katrina ran much more smoothly. A widespread urban legend states that one out of every five miles of the interstate highway system must be built straight and flat so as to be usable by aircraft during times of war. Contrary to popular law, interstate highways are not designed to serve as airstrips. Numbering System Primary Routes the numbering scheme for the interstate highway system was developed in 1957 by the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. The association's present numbering policy dates back to August 10, 1973. Within the continental United States, primary interstates a euro also called mainline interstates or two-digit interstates a euro or assigned numbers less than 100. In the numbering scheme for the primary routes, East-West highways are assigned even numbers and North-South highways are assigned odd numbers. Odd route numbers increase from West to East, and even numbered routes increase from South to North, though there are exceptions to both principles in several locations. This numbering system holds true even if the local direction of the route does not match the compass directions. For example, Interstate 94 between Chicago and Milwaukee runs primarily North-South, but bears an east-west designation to match its overall orientation, with the east label matching the local southward routing, and so on. In some cases the deviation can be dramatic, for example Interstate 64 runs almost exactly the wrong way in the Hampton Roads region, with the labeled east direction running almost due west. While in many cases, this is due to relatively short deviations, compared to the overall routing of the highway, it is not always the case. For example, Interstate 26 is labeled east-west as its number suggests, but it carries a more generally north-south routing. Numbers divisible by five are intended to be major arteries among the primary routes, carrying traffic long distances. Major northern Euro-South arterial interstates increase in number from EA Euro 5 between Canada and Mexico along the west coast to EA Euro 95 between Canada and Miami along the east coast. Major west to Euro East arterial interstates increase in number from EA Euro 10 between Santa Monica, California, and Jacksonville, Florida, to EA Euro 90 between Seattle, Washington, and Boston, Massachusetts, with two exceptions. There is no I-50 or I-60, as routes with those numbers would likely pass through states that currently have U.S. highways with the same numbers, which is not allowed under Highway Administration guidelines. Several two-digit numbers are shared between road segments at opposite ends of the country. Some of these were due to a change in the numbering system as a result of a new policy adopted in 1973. Previously, letter suffix numbers were used for long spurs of primary routes. For example, Western EA Euro 84 was EA Euro 80N, as it went north from EA Euro 80. The new policy stated, no new divided numbers shall be adopted. The new policy also recommended that existing divided numbers be eliminated as quickly as possible. However, an EA Euro 35W and EA Euro 35E still exist in the Dallas Euro Fort Worth Metroplex in Texas, and an EA Euro 35W and EA Euro 35E that run through Minneapolis and St. Paul, 
Minnesota, still exist. Additionally, due to congressional requirements, three sections of I-69 in southern Texas will be divided into I-69W, I-69E, and I-69C. Ashto policy allows dual numbering to provide continuity between major control points. This is referred to as a concurrency or overlap. For example, EA Euro 75 and EA Euro 85 share the same roadway in Atlanta. This 7.4-mile section, called the Downtown Connector, is labeled both EA Euro 75 and EA Euro 85. Concurrencies between interstate and U.S. route numbers are also allowed in accordance with Ashto policy, as long as the length of the concurrency is reasonable. In rare instances, two highway designations sharing the same roadway are signed as traveling in opposite directions. One such wrongway concurrency is found between Ithevel and Fort Kissel, Virginia, where EA Euro 81 North and EA Euro 77 South are equivalent as are EA Euro 81 South and EA Euro 77 North. Auxiliary Interstates Auxiliary interstate highways are circumferential, radial, or spur highways that principally serve urban areas. These types of interstate highways are given three-digit route numbers, which consist of a single-digit prefix to the two-digit number of its parent interstate highway. Spur routes deviate from their parent and do not return. These are given in odd first digit. Circumferential and radial loop routes return to the parent, and are given in even first digit. Due to the large number of these routes, auxiliary route numbers may be repeated in different states along the main line. Some auxiliary highways do not follow these guidelines, however. See list of auxiliary interstate highways for examples. Auxiliary routes do not follow the same numbering scheme with regards to primary routes with regards to their compass designations. For example, Interstate 190 is labeled north-south, while I-195 in New Jersey is labeled east-west. In the example above, City A has an even-numbered circumferential highway. City B has an even-numbered circumferential beltway and an odd-numbered spur. City C has an even-numbered circumferential highway and an odd-numbered spur. Because cities A, B, and C are in the same state, each auxiliary route carries a distinct three-digit route number. Unlike primary interstates, three-digit interstates are signed as either west-east or north-south, depending on the general orientation of the route, without regard to the route number. For some looped interstate routes, inner outer directions are used as a directional labeling system, as opposed to compass directions. Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. The interstate highway system also extends to Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico, even though they have no direct land connections to any other states or territories. However, their residents still pay federal fuel and tire taxes. The interstates in Hawaii, all located on the most populous island of Oahu, carry the prefix H. There are three one-digit routes in the state and one auxiliary route. These interstates connect several military and naval bases together, as well as the important cities and towns spread across Oahu, and especially the metropolis of Honolulu. Both Alaska and Puerto Rico also have public highways that receive 90% of their funding from the Interstate Highway Program. The interstates of Alaska and Puerto Rico are numbered sequentially in order of funding without regard to the rules on odd and even numbers. They also carry the prefixes A and PR, respectively. However, these highways are signed according to their local designations, not their interstate highway numbers. Furthermore, these routes were neither planned according to nor constructed to the official interstate highway standards. Mile markers and exit numbers on one or two digit interstates, the mile marker numbering almost always begins at the southern or western state line. If an interstate originates within a state, the numbering begins from the location where the road begins in the south or west. In Texas, I 35W and I 35E each begin when I 35 splits around mile marker or 370 south of the Dallas or Euro Fort Worth area. Where the split occurs, I-35E continues I-35's mile marker numbering, while I-35W starts at zero at the split. Where the two segments rejoin north of the Dallas-Euro-Fort Worth area, 
I-35 continues the numbering from I-35E to the Oklahoma state line. Exceptions exist for interstate highways that used segments of roadway that were built prior to interstate highway standards being formalized and were grandfathered into the system. Three-digit interstates with an even first number that form a complete circumferential bypass around a city feature mile markers that are numbered in a clockwise direction, beginning just west of an interstate that bisects the circumferential route near a south polar location. In other words, mile marker R1 on the Euro 465, a 53-mile route around Indianapolis, is just west of its junction with the Euro 65 on the south side of Indianapolis and mile marker R53 is just east of this same junction. The exit numbers of interchanges are either sequential or distance-based so that the exit number is the same as the nearest mile marker. Under the latter system, a single mile with multiple exits may be assigned letter suffixes. Business routes. Ashto defines a category of special routes separate from primary and auxiliary interstate designations. These routes do not have to comply to interstate construction standards but are routes that may be identified and approved by the association. The same route marking policy applies to both U.S. numbered highways and interstate highways. However, business route designations are sometimes used for interstate highways. Known as business loops and business spurs, these routes principally travel through the corporate limits of a city, passing through the central business district. Business routes are used when the regular route is directed around the city. They also use a green shield instead of the red and blue shield. Financing Interstate highways and their rights of way are owned by the state in which they were built. The last federally owned portion of the interstate system was the Woodrow Wilson Bridge on the Washington, D.C. Capitol Beltway. The new bridge was completed in 2009 and is collectively owned by Virginia and Maryland maintenance is generally the responsibility of the State Department of Transportation. However, there are some segments of interstate owned and maintained by local authorities. About 70% of the construction and maintenance costs of interstate highways in the United States have been paid through user fees, primarily the fuel taxes collected by the federal, state, and local governments. To a much lesser extent they have been paid for by tolls collected on toll highways and bridges. The Highway Trust Fund, established by the Highway Revenue Act in 1956, prescribed a 3 cent per gallon fuel tax, soon increased to 4.5 cents per gallon. In 1993 the tax was increased to 18.4 cents per gallon, where it remains as of 2012. The rest of the costs of these highways are borne by general fund receipts bond issues, designated property taxes, and other taxes. The federal contribution comes overwhelmingly from motor vehicle and fuel taxes, and it makes up about 60% of the contributions by the states. However, any local government contributions are overwhelmingly from sources besides user fees. The portion of the user fees spent on highways themselves covers about 57% of their costs, with about one-sixth of the user fees being sent to other programs, including the mass transit systems in large cities. In the northeastern United States, some large sections of interstate highways that were planned or constructed before 1956 are still operated as toll roads. Others have had their construction bonds paid off and they have become toll-free, such as in Connecticut, Maryland, Virginia, and Kentucky. As American suburbs have expanded, the costs incurred in maintaining freeway infrastructure have also grown, leaving little in the way of funds for new interstate construction. This has led to the proliferation of toll roads as the new method of building limited access highways in suburban areas. Some interstates are privately maintained to meet rising costs of maintenance and allow state departments of transportation to focus on serving the fastest growing regions in their states. Parts of the interstate system might have to be told in the future to meet maintenance and expansion demands, as has been done with adding toll HOV hot lanes in cities such as Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. Although part of the tolling is an effect of the Staffordshire Euro LU Act, which has put an emphasis on toll roads as a means to reduce congestion, present federal law does not allow for a state to change a freeway section to a tolled section for all traffic. Toll Interstate Highways 
approximately 2,900 miles of toll roads are included in the interstate highway system. While federal legislation initially banned the collection of tolls on interstates, many of the toll roads on the system were either completed or under construction when the interstate highway system was established. Since these highways provided logical connections to other parts of the system, they were designated as interstate highways. Congress also decided that it was too costly to either build toll-free interstates parallel to these toll roads, or directly repay all the bondholders who finance these facilities and remove the tolls. Thus, these toll roads were grandfathered into the interstate highway system. Toll facilities designated as interstate highways were typically allowed to continue collecting tolls, but are generally ineligible to receive federal funds for maintenance and improvements. In addition, these toll facilities were grandfathered from interstate highway standards. A notable example is the western approach to the Benjamin Franklin Bridge in Philadelphia, where I-676 is a surface street section through a historic area. Policies on toll facilities and interstate highways have since changed. The Federal Highway Administration has allowed some states to collect tolls on existing interstate highways, while a recent extension of I-376 included a section of Pennsylvania Route 060 that was tolled by the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission before receiving interstate designation. Also, newer toll facilities must conform to interstate standards. A new edition of the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices in 2009 requires a black on yellow toll sign to be placed above the interstate trailblazer on interstate highways that collect tolls. Legislation passed in 2005 known as Safety LU, encouraged states to construct new interstate highways through innovative financing methods. Safety LU facilitated states to pursue innovative financing by easing the restrictions on building interstates as toll roads either through state agencies or through public euro private partnerships. However, Safety Euro LU left in place a prohibition of installing tolls on existing toll free interstates and states wishing to toll such routes to finance upgrades and repairs must first seek approval from Congress. Chargeable and non-chargeable interstate routes, interstate highways financed with federal funds are known as chargeable interstate routes, and are considered part of the 42,000-mile network of highways. Federal laws also allow non-chargeable interstate routes, highways funded similarly to state and U.S. highways to be signed as interstates, if they both meet the interstate highway standards and are logical additions or connections to the system. These additions fall under two categories, routes that already meet interstate standards, and routes not yet upgraded to interstate standards. Only routes that meet interstate standards may be signed as interstates once their proposed number is approved. Signage, Interstate Shield Interstate highways are signed by a number placed on a trademarked red, white, and blue sign. The colors red, white, and blue are chosen because they are the colors of the American flag. In the original design, the name of the state was displayed above the highway number, but in many states, this area is now left blank. The sign usually measures 36 inches high, and is 36 inches wide for two-digit interstates or 45 inches for three-digit interstates. Interstate business loops and spurs use a special shield in which the red and blue are replaced with green, the word business appears instead of interstate, and the word spur, or loop usually appears above the number. The green shield is employed to mark the main route through a city's central business district, which intersects the associated interstate highway at one or both ends of the business route. The route usually traverses the main thoroughfare, S of the city's downtown area or other major business district. A city may have more than one interstate-derived business route, depending on the number of interstates passing through a city and the number of significant business districts therein. Over time, the design of the interstate shield has changed. In 1957 the interstate shield designed by Texas Highway Department employee Richard Oliver was introduced, the winner of a contest that included 100 entries. At the time, the shield color was a dark navy blue and only 17 inches wide. The Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices Standards revised the shield in the 1961, 1971, and 1978 editions. Exit Numbering The majority of interstates have exit numbers. 
all traffic signs and lane markings on the interstates are supposed to be designed in compliance with the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. There are, however, many local and regional variations in signage. For many years California was the only state that did not use an exit numbering system. It was granted an exemption in the 1950s due to having an already largely completed and signed highway system. Placing exit number signage across the state was deemed too expensive. California began to incorporate exit numbers on its freeways in 2002 a Euro interstate, U.S., and state routes alike. Caltrans commonly installs exit number signage only when a freeway or interchange is built, reconstructed, retrofitted, or repaired to control costs, and it is usually just tacked onto the top right corner of an already existing sign. Newer signs along the freeways follow this practice as well. Most exits along California's interstates now have exit number signage, particularly in rural areas. Exit numbers correspond to interstate mileage markers in most states. On EA Euro 19 inches Arizona, however, length is measured in kilometers instead of miles because, at the time of construction, a push for the United States to change to a metric system of measurement had gained enough traction that it was mistakenly assumed that all highway measurements would eventually be changed to metric. Proximity to metric using Mexico may also have been a factor, as EA Euro 19 indirectly connects EA Euro 10 to the Mexican federal highway system via surface streets in Nogales. Mileage count increases from west to east on most even numbered interstates. On odd-numbered interstates mileage count increases from south to north. Some tollways, including the New York State Thruway and Jane Addams Memorial Tollway, use sequential exit numbering schemes. Exits on the New York State Thruway count up from Yonkers traveling north, and then west from Albany. On the Jane Addams Memorial Tollway mileage markers count up from O'Hare International Airport traveling west, which is the starting point of the tollway. As of November 2010 the Illinois State Tollway Authority has redone the mileage markers to be uniform with the rest of the state on EA Euro 90 and the EA Euro 94 section of the Tri Euro State Tollway, which previously had matched the EA Euro 294 section starting in the south at EA Euro 80 IL Route 394. The tollway is also currently in the process of adding exit number tabs to the exits. Many northeastern states label exit numbers sequentially, regardless of how many miles have passed between exits. States in which interstate exits are still numbered sequentially are Connecticut, Delaware, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. As such, five of the main interstate highways that remain completely within these states have interchanges numbered sequentially along their entire routes. Maine, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida followed this system for a number of years, but since converted to mileage-based exit numbers. Georgia renumbered in 2000, while Maine did so in 2004. The Pennsylvania Turnpike uses both mile marker numbers and sequential numbers. Mile marker numbers are used for signage, while sequential numbers are used for numbering interchanges internally. The New Jersey Turnpike including the portions which are signed as EA Euro 95 and EA Euro 78, also has sequential numbering, but other interstates within New Jersey use mile markers. EA Euro 87 in New York State is numbered in three sections. The first section makes up the major Deegan Expressway in the Bronx, with interchanges numbered sequentially from 1 to 14. The second section of EA Euro 87 is a part of the New York State through way that starts in Yonkers and continues north to Albany. At Albany, the throughway turns west and becomes EA Euro 90 for exits 25 to 61. From Albany north to the Canadian border, the exits on EA Euro 87 are numbered sequentially from 1 to 44 along the New York State Northway. This often leads to confusion as there is more than one exit on EA Euro 87 with the same number. For example, Exeter 4 on throughway section of EA Euro 87 connects with the Cross County Parkway in Yonkers, but Exeter 4 on the Northway is the exit for the Albany Airport. These two exits share a number but are located 150 miles apart. Sign Locations There are four common signage methods on interstates, locating a sign on the ground to the side of the highway, mostly the right, 
and is used to denote exits, as well as rest areas, motorist services such as gas and lodging, recreational sites, and freeway names, attaching the sign to an overpass. The last two involve gantries and are the most common signage methods, mounting on half gantries that are located on one side of the highway, like a ground-mounted sign, mounting on full gantries that bridge the entire width of the highway and often show two or more. Signs Statistics Volume Heaviest traveled 374,000 vehicles per day Year Euro 405 in Los Angeles, California Elevation Highest 11,158 feet, Ia Euro 70 in the Eisenhower Tunnel at the Continental Divide in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Lowest, at 52 feet, Ia Euro 8 at the New River near Sealy, California. Lowest, a 103 feet, I-95 in the Fort McHenry Tunnel under the Baltimore Harbor. Length, longest, 3,020.54 miles, Ia Euro 90 from Boston, Massachusetts to Seattle, Washington. Longest, 1920 ME, Ia Euro 95 from the Canadian border near Holton, Maine, to Miami, Florida, not counting the gap in New Jersey to be completed in 2017. Shortest, 12.27 ME, Ia Euro 73 from Emory to Greensboro, North Carolina. Longest segment between state lines, 879 ME, I-10 in Texas from the New Mexico state line near El Paso to the Louisiana state line near Orange, Texas. Shortest segment between state lines, 453 LFT, Ia Euro 95-I-495 on the Woodrow Wilson Bridge across the Potomac River where they briefly cross the southernmost tip of the District of Columbia between its lines with Maryland and Virginia. Longest concurrency, 278.4 AMI. Ear Euro 80 and Ear Euro 90. Gary, Indiana, to Illyria, Ohio. States, most states served by an interstate, 15 estates plus the District of Columbia, Ear Euro 95 through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia DC, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire and Maine. Most interstates in a state, 29 routes, New York, totaling 1,674.73 ME. Most interstate mileage in a state, 3,233.45 ME, Texas, in 17 different routes. See also Expressways of China, Expressways in South Korea, signage and numbering heavily influenced by interstate highway system, Auto routes of Quebec, signage and numbering also heavily influenced by interstate highway system, international e-road network, list of controlled access highway systems, non-motorized access on freeways, notes. References Further reading External links, Dwight D. Eisenhower National System of Interstate and Defense Highways, Federal Highway Administration, Route Log and Finder List, FHWA, Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center, FHWA, Interstate Highway System, Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum, Keep on Trucking? Would you pay more in taxes to fix roads and rail? Now on PBS, Interstate at 50, Ashto.